This is a demo of the basic mail merge features of the program without actually editing the base letters, which we will do in another demo. So let's just start by doing a sample letter for one donor. We go to letters, one letter. Now you'll see in this section one, there are several radio buttons for different types of information that you can merge. The last option here, gift and kind receipt information, is only for Canadian users and disappears if you have said you're in another country. So the first option will just be a straight letter for the donor. Over here in the merge fields area is just a list of the fields that are available to be merged into this type of letter. You can scroll it to see all of them. You can select, but nothing happens. It's just for your information. The next section is to get the file name. Now the normal thing you do is you just leave this clicked here. I want to use standard names and to use the standard donor letter which is called donors merge. You'll see the file name changes as we select different letter type options. So let's stick with donor information. By clicking edit you can see the input letter with the merge codes. The merge codes are these things enclosed in double angle brackets. It's often called a template. This merge is going to be using the sample letter that's delivered with the program, which isn't really intended for real use. It's just a sample of what you can do. One thing you'll notice is the light gray boxes here at the top. They indicate the borders of cells within tables that are in the template to help you see its structure. They don't appear on printouts of the merge document or saves to PDF. Let's close this then click Merge to do the actual merge. So you can see it is merged in your organization's name, address, and phone number. A logo file puts the donor's name and address, dear and their name, and the text of the letter. This is a letter that isn't related to individual donations, though over here you can see it does refer to pledges. You'd remove that from the template if you didn't use pledges. Now you can still edit this merged letter. Let's say you look at it and say, oh, I want to use his nickname. Highlight the name and overtype it with what you want. For instance, I'm just going to change this to Jimmy. Just like in any word processor, and this is basically a simple word processor that we're in. Now we could click this toolbar icon to print it. We could save it to a PDF. We could email it to the donor if we'd set that up appropriately in the program. Note the name of the merged file in the title bar here. It's donors merge underbar save. So it's added underbar save before .htm. And that's the standard way merged file names are created from the input template file name. You don't generally have to know that or do anything with that knowledge though. So I'm just going to exit. It's going to ask me about saving changes because I changed it. I don't care about this one and in fact in general it may not be necessary to save merged letters because you can always recreate them. So I'll say close without saving. Now the next type you might do is current donation information. Let me first just go back out to the main window. This is going to be a, d a letter about the exact donation that the hand is pointing to in the list here. Currently it's just pointing to the space for an empty letter, so I need to click on a field in an actual donation so that it'll be a letter about that one. Let's say it's this donation to the library. I just entered that perhaps and I want to do a thank you letter. So letters, one letter. We make sure current donation information is clicked and then merge. So here's our sample letter for one donation. Again, it's got a lot of the same information at the top, but this time we're including the amount, the date of the donation. Now this part here is for if you're using eligible amounts and advantages for Canadian donations that are called split receiving. If you weren't in Canada, you'd probably delete this sentence from your template letter, but we're not going into that in this demo. There's a separate demo on editing mail merge documents. Now here's the category of the donation, how it was paid, which will be the word check or you might have entered a check number. There's a reference to the pledge again, which might be inappropriate, and also a description that wasn't present, so you might need to remove that. This template also gives you the year-to-date total. 
Anyways, let's exit all that. Now let's look at the total donations information letter. That's going to give you a letter about the total amount donated over a certain time range in the current year. So when I click merge, the first thing that comes up is this date range prompt. With this, you could do a letter for a quarter, a month, whatever you wanted, or for the whole year. I'm just going to do it for the whole year to date as it's prompting me. So in this case, we've got the same information at the top again, but this time we're thanking them for their total donations for this year between a specified range of dates, which are also in the letter. This letter could be used as a statement to the donors because it can include this details area down here showing your donations this year so far or within your time range and also a summary totals by category area. You don't have to include either of those sections in your template. You can include only one of them. You could also alter which fields appear in this details table. And again that would be done by editing the template but this is our sample that has the most basic information just date, amount, and category. So we'll close that. We're going to skip pledge letters. They're a bit more complex because there are three different types of pledging available in the program. That's all covered in detail in the help. Finally, let's look at a letter for a receipt, which would be a replacement for the built-in receipts in the program. Now let's see if the current donor's donation happens to be part of a receipt. In other words, if it has a receipt number. Uh, yes, it does. It's part of receipt number one. So that's fine. We'll be able to do this in the one letters menu. So selected receipt information. Note that the standard receipt template here has Canada in its name. It's the version for Canada. Later we'll switch this. So click merge. Here's our replacement for the built-in receipt using mail merge. You'll see there's a lot more tables in this one with the light gray borders to show where they are just to do a nice layout of the receipt. It's very similar to the built-in receipt that you would more commonly use, but this allows you to change the formatting. You'll see I've got a bitmap signature in this one, as well as the bitmap logo, which was in the other letters. How to set those up is covered in another demo, and of course in the help. And there's the second half of it, which you can detach and retain for your records as it says. It has the details and the summary which is a bit like in the total donations letter. And again, of course, you can print, save to PDF, or even email it as an attachment, whatever you want to do with it. I should note that using the letters menu options to reprint receipts isn't the usual way to create mail merge receipts. That's done with the receipt menu options and will be covered in a separate demo. As mentioned earlier, this last option for gift and kind receipt information is only present for Canadian users and only if you have selected to have distinct gift and kind receipts. We won't go into that here, it's in the help. So that's doing one letter at a time. Before continuing, let's switch to the US receipt style with the receipt options and we'll just change it to USA and OK. Now let's look at mass mailings. So letters, mass mailing. Now we've got two more options here in new sections two and three. The first is whether you want to filter the information before doing the merge or export and that also just means viewing the information. I'm going to leave that selected so you can see what happens. In section three there's an option to just export the data to a file in order to do the merge yourself in your word processing program. So if there's just some reason that you can't get what you want out of the letters in donation or the formatting that's allowed for those letters within our baby word processor, then you can do that mail merge yourself with exported data and it doesn't merge the letters at all. It just gives you the data file. You do your own mail merge in say Microsoft Word. However, that is actually much more limited in what it can do. In particular, you can't get those details or summary tables for donations included. So I'll turn that off, go back to donor information only. It's going to be exactly the same letters we use for under one letter, but it's going to do it for every single donor except for possibly any filtering. So click Merge. What the filtering option does is going to show us all of the data that's going to be selected. There are all of these different fields that are being selected and you could scroll to see the rest of them. The scroll bar is currently off screen at the size we're recording. After scrolling right a bit, 
you can see this category one field which has a categorization of the donor such as member or attender. With that I'm going to give you an example of how you could use this for filtering. If I click filter then pick from the list of fields here scroll and find category one and then I'm just going to type equals quote member. Clicking OK will restrict the list to only those donors with a category one value of member. And then those are the only ones that are going to get this letter. So now when I'm ready to do the letter, I click merge. Now we've got several letters. If you start scrolling, you can see we've got letters for multiple people. And they're all the same letter, but with each person's appropriate data. And as usual, you can now print that off or do whatever you want to it. If you have specific changes that you want to make to the letters, again, you can edit them in here. Let's go back and again uh, give Jimmy his nickname. I could also perhaps come down here and add a PS. Hey Jimmy, thanks again. The thing to keep in mind is that you're just editing these final output letters. You're not editing the input template, which we do in the another demo. So this change will not reappear on any further letter that you create in the future. And again, I'm not going to save that. The individual donation information is similar to the current donation information in the one letter option, but here we're going to enter a range of date. So let's say we want only the ones that came in on August 1st of this year. So this will be one letter for every individual donation that came in on the first. This time I'm going to turn off the filtering option because I don't have any need to preview or filter this one. So now when you click merge it goes to the date range prompt and I can type just 8 slash 1 in each of these fields and it'll fill in the year for me automatically. Click OK. There's no display of the data. It just goes straight to the letters. Here's one letter for each individual donation made on that day and we can close the window. Total donations information is just the same as before, prompting for a range of dates and donations to include, but for all or filtered donors. So I'll omit demonstrating it here. Receipt information. You'll see that the template file name is now one for the USA, Receipts Merge USA. This prompts for a range of receipt numbers to merge. I'll just do one and two, which are the only ones that actually currently exist in this year's database that I'm using for this sample. And there we go. They're actually not in numerical order, they're in alphabetical order by the person's name, Carol Adams followed by Jim Adams. And that's really it. That's your samples of all the basic things you can do without editing the letters, which we'll do in a following demo. Thank you for listening.